Hey, it's Brian with Team Aquascape, and welcome to a special edition of Team Aquascape, solely dedicated to me. <laughs> and this is going to be more about the day in the life of what I do to run kind of the construction side, the maintenance side, the retail side of our business. And I thought, who better to interview right away than the guy who had the idea of putting this all together? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? What I understand it's your house and everything, but is this your little hiding spot? <laughs> what do you mean? This is where I come out to get my one-on-one -on -one time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing your intro for your uh, Sunday edition of Team Aquascape, Brian. So if you could sum it up best, what would you say to everybody? I would say that the <laughs> Team Aquascape uh, vlog is showing a lot of construction, but the thing that it fails to show is what you do, which is the selling, the designing, working with Jenna, the back end operations. So I want Sunday to be about how you run the largest installation maintenance retail division of decorative water features in the world. And that's your job. So I want to see that every Sunday. You heard it from the man, the pond guy. Get her done. <laughs> so it'll be interesting. Every week it's going to be a little different. It should be fun. I never know what to plan for the next day. So you guys are just going to kind of go on the wild ride we call local market construction. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Every Sunday, tune in. It's going to be interesting. Thanks. All right, guys, uh, it's about 6 a.m. I thought I'd start off by just kind of giving you my daily routine. Every morning, I come out here by my pond, grab my cup of coffee, cute coffee, grab my fish food, sit down here by the pond, feed the fish, and kind of go over my calendar. And my calendar's really king. I love starting my day out here every morning. I sit down at 6 o'clock, go over my calendar. The guys are showing up to the office around 6.30. I'll give Chris and Matt a call right at 6.30, kind of tell them what's going on for the day's project or if they have any questions we can kind of go over that and then usually set up a time to meet them let me turn this around kind of show you my view got some of these guys in here getting their morning breakfast sitting by my waterfall every day I'm gonna see if I can't figure out something that uh, you guys will learn from so today I don't know if you'll learn anything out of it but here's just the process I'm gonna take you on my journey throughout the day and then we'll go from there a good, good friend of mine, Matt from Wasco Nursery, a garden center that I've been working with for a long time. And I love working with Matt because uh, we really share a vision together. I don't have to explain my thoughts and he doesn't have to explain his. So I like working with him quite a bit and he gave me this lead. He's got a uh, landscape that he's actually working on right now. You can see the guys in the background working on. They had a previous contractor come out here and build the pond. And here's the challenge. From my understanding, um, the pond doesn't hold water, doesn't work, most importantly, Importantly, it's leaking everywhere so it doesn't work at all and aesthetically just doesn't look the way they were envisioning so I can't wait to actually go see it and put my own eyes on it unfortunately this happens a lot for us so here we go I just got here uh, you can tell it's a new install she wasn't happy with a lot of things like right in here used a different type of brick than that <laughs> that a uh, little detail type stuff you go from you know a soldier course to a sailor course along the side here and this type of brick won't work as a sailor course but that's not our expertise our expertise is this stuff right in here and to be honest I've seen a whole lot worse it's definitely not the worst looking water feature I've seen the challenge this contractor definitely had and probably where he got in over his head is not realizing that to get a waterfall of this height with a yard that slopes away this drastically is very, very tricky. I agree with the idea of getting it high. I like the idea of aiming it towards the main viewing areas of the house, but to pull this off, you need three times the amount of stone in your retaining wall as you do in the actual water feature itself. And let me show you what I mean. So they started adding some retaining wall stone in here, but this will never work every day Every time it rains, this is gonna erode. This is gonna erode, this is gonna erode. When that erodes, eventually this hillside gets up into here and those rocks start moving. When those start moving, then the biofall that sits in there starts moving and so on and so on. Even with that big berm like that planted, it still won't look right. It still has very much this volcano type look with water splewing out of the top. So the first thing I'm gonna recommend is that whether we use this type of stone for the retaining wall or not is probably not the most important part but at the very least move this out further bring this all the way out into here by bringing this retaining wall out into here 
I gain a lot more real estate to soften up this berm. I also want this wall to come up higher. So if this wall comes up into here, then this berm moves more at a very gentle slope, making this look like it actually comes out of a hillside, especially from that area over there. The other thing I'm not a big fan of, and this is just personal preference, but I don't like mixing this outcropping type stone with these granite round rocks. It's kind of like, pick which ones don't look natural, which ones don't belong. Now, if you were to do the whole thing out of this stuff, not a big deal. But to mix the two, personal preference, I don't like it. The other thing I wouldn't have done is use this slate style chip on top of the liner. It can be very sharp, very abrasive, and uh, over time you can have some issues. So I'm guessing they want a whole rehab. In fact, her exact words were, I want amazing and this is not amazing. And I'll agree, it's not. We need more dirt this way. We need more dirt this way. So I'm gonna want to put, bring in some extra boulders to go around this tree. I would love to see big boulders even kind of line this walkway, making the walkway have more of an intimate feeling right in here. By building this up and this feeling sunken, it'll just have a totally different feeling. So we'll just demo this whole thing, bring in some larger rocks. I need to look at access, and it looks like I can probably come in from over here rather than the side of the house. If I can take apart a section of that fence and get a machine back here, then we can get some decent sized boulders in this. So I'm gonna give Matt uh, from Wasco a call, let him know what my plans are, and then if he wants me to present that proposal to the customer, if either way, we're gonna try to get this thing fixed. So that was fun. Got to do a little consultation with you guys. Got to see what that looked like. I was actually hoping if I had enough time, I could go paint out a rec pond for another customer, a customer that we built a pond for two years ago, and their biggest regret was not going a little bit bigger. So we're gonna go make that bigger for him. Hey, so um, I told you I was gonna try to sneak in this other consultation, but I thought I'd kidnap Chris Hansen. Chris, go ahead and introduce yourself. Not that you need an introduction, but. So as the VP of construction, you know, Greg wanted me to kind of say the day in the life of what goes on with me and, and how do I keep a $3 million business part of our business uh, operating all the time. And I would say the very most thing is to have key people. There's no way I can do it. Greg taught me this years ago, Greg said, Work on your business, not in your business. In order for me to work on the construction side, the local market side, I need key people. I need a guy like that guy right there. Turn around, Chris, show him who you are. No, not that guy. Oh, this guy. <laughs> Even though I wonder if he's for, oh, she's for she, hire. <laughs> Cause we need help too. We need, we, need, uh, we need more bench strength for sure. But it's having a right hand man, it's having a right hand lady. You guys probably have not met Jenna yet, but Jenna controls my calendar. Between her and my wife, they really just tell me where to be and what time to be there so part of running a successful business is always thinking about next year and and what did you what were the successes this year what were the failures this year and so I think a big part of what myself Jenna Chris the rest of the aquascape team are going to be showing you is like you elegantly put Chris our dirty laundry we're still learning we've been doing this for a long time but every single day we're learning more and more and what uh, what works and what doesn't work okay we made it safe and sound what are you doing there so check it out Chris check this out so I came out here before um, I didn't have really the opportunity to mark it out for him which is shame on me because you never want to leave a consultation without them having an idea of what it's gonna look like I hate doing drawings because then they have to take the drawing and then somehow translate it back to the backyard so I'm gonna come out here with a can of spray paint so they can actually see how big this feature is going to be. Um, they're 100% doing this for their grandchildren. They want the kids to be able to get inside the pond, recreate, if you will. Yeah, that's a word. Mm. I made it up. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. When I said paint that picture a little bit more vividly for them, mm. this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> There's two options with this. Because we have an existing pond, we could rip that whole pond out and then just start over there. Or we can look for an easy place to seam on. And with this pond, there's not really an easy spot to seam on, but there is a section there. The other key thing we want to do when we're adding on to a pond is not make it look like it was addition. I want to make it look like it was designed as one big giant water feature. So I think I've got an area over here that makes sense to kind of come in and seam over in there. Mm -hmm. The other thing we want to do, like I noticed they put this net up and it's not to keep the heron and predators away. It's because these river birches are just messy. And yeah. so right now they have 
thousands of leaves falling today, especially with the lack of water we've had. It hasn't rained in about a month. And so this thing's just shedding leaves. I mean, look at that. It looks like fall right now with all those leaves. So instead of a skimmer box, what we're gonna do is install a big intake bay, which is a giant version of a skimmer box. This then allows Bill, instead of having to kneel down and empty a skimmer box, just to take a net and scoop out the debris, which will be a whole lot easier for them. Yeah. But once you've figured out the shape, now we're tripling the size of this pond. So where am I gonna put a wetland filter? Where does the intake bay go? How do I circulate all this extra water? And so those are the things that I'm just trying to mentally figure out. Where do you interact with the pond? So how does this deck and patio and, and mm. space over here work? In my mind, that's what I'm thinking about with the design. Not just how do I slam this thing in the ground and take their money, right? <laughs> like, I want it to all work. So B, I see some um, spray paint on the ground right here. You've got uh, some white paint. Chris, and, Chris, no, 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 and some orange paint. They said yes. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, we have excited new customers, right? Or past customers. Past customers, yep. So this is great. We kind of walked through. We came up with even some new additions to it. Right where I'm at now is going to be a crushed stone patio. They're going to change this deck a little bit. Mm -hmm. have stairs that wrap around to here. So the railing comes off. Leading you down into this space. Cool. I really feel that the recreation side of the pond, the bigger, deeper area, you're gonna to wanna to sit by it more. And closing this deck off right here wouldn't be nearly as um, inviting. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part to me to make that happen. This crushed stone is gonna tie into the crushed stone that's over there by the fire pit. So I think it'll look good. And then they really just want an easy way to get into the pond. So we've been doing this quite a bit lately, but we're gonna do a composite brick step um, stairs coming down into here, okay. framed out with some big giant boulders sees, on the side. Yep. And it's great, like you've got you've got the skills, I don't, to cut that brick around the stones. And I know how much you love doing I could teach stuff. you. <laughs> I could Why? teach you. Why? No, I could teach you. you. Know? Teach a man to fish. Nope, I'm good. I'll just stay hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Over on the far side, big waterfall. And like always, facing towards the house. So they got that big picture window there. They got their deck, they got the patio. And I don't want to create the same type of waterfall we have over there, so I'm hoping here we just get one big giant drop. One of the challenging parts for this is going to be the seam over there. Yep. When you're doing a big seam like that, you've got to give yourself time. And you need three, four guys to do that because you need guys holding the liner, getting it straight. you got to get big boards under there. We have to gently take apart everything without putting a hole yeah. in the liner. So it's not hard. It's just extremely time consuming. So you got to allow time for that. So we'll get that seam done. All of our excavated dirt gets flipped over to here to create that massive berm. We get to bring our new chainsaw out, chop down some trees for them. We'll get that stuff out of here. We've got a bog filter coming over in here. It's hard to see, but our intake bay is going to come all the way over into here. Now the key with an intake bay is you need an area for it to choke down. So just like a skimmer and how you have that weir on the front of your skimmer box, that weir creates a funnel where everything comes down. Well, we're gonna have three pumps sitting in here. So I need a bigger funnel. And so we're gonna get it about five, six feet wide right here. Mm -hmm. You might even dig it out a little bit further and then our stone will dictate how wide we want this intake bay. The other key thing is you want about 12 inches of water in your intake bay. That comfortably allows a net to get put down in there and scoop those leaves out. If it's too shallow, the net keeps hitting the bottom mm. and it's hard to get all those leaves out. Nope. You want an opportunity for those leaves to kind of swirl around at the top and then effortlessly pull them out. Yep. Some cool bells and whistles, the stairs, the intake bay, the wetland filter coming over here. And then I like the design with the stairs wrapping around the deck and then a neat pathway can um, happen in the future that takes them to the front of the house. We gotta get back to Aquascape. All right, let's All go. Right, let's go. <laughs> All right, just pulled up to Aquascape, headed over to see Jenna. I always like to park in the front of the building and come through retail store entrance. Another part of my job is kind of overseeing the whole retail store. And the reason I like to come in front is just to get an idea of what our first impressions look like. And from a glance, it looks pretty good, right? It's not too bad. Um, I pay attention to little things like bird poop on the walls, mud sitting there. I always like to walk out to our aquatic plant section, take a look and see how things are looking out here. First glance, things look pretty good, but it's just always important to just kind of take a look at that kind of stuff. It also gives me an idea of what our inventory looks like. So when I'm selling jobs to customers, I know if we have lilies and irises and all that kind of stuff. But here we go. This is, what would you guys call yourselves? How would we introduce you? These are the people that keep me running. Yeah. <laughs> so look what I got, guys. A contract I with know. a check, huh? Yeah. Wow, big set. 
Contracts and checks. So look it, this is this is my day. You see that man up there? Some people call him Greg Whitstock. He calls himself the pond guy. This guy right there in red is the guy that's gonna put our Sunday video together. They are yelling at me because they're looking for the footage. So let's just wrap this up, huh? This is Amanda, you're gonna see a whole lot more of her. This is Jenna, you're gonna see a whole lot more of her. The schedule is there. <laughs> we have to cram all of this onto that sheet of paper. And Jenna just announced that if we can cram all of this onto that sheet of paper, <laughs> at the end of the year, we will be $86,000 ahead of budget. What I know is the only way to do that is figure out how to put nine days in a week and 29 hours in a day. So Amanda's gonna work on that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. This has been fun. I hope you enjoy these videos. It's just gonna be kind of the Truman Show and a day in the life of Brian. And I have no idea how it's gonna go. Every week is gonna be completely different. We have new challenges, new obstacles. Some of them are gonna be maintenance. Some of them are gonna be retail. Some of them are gonna be construction. But no matter what, it'll be exciting. And you're gonna see how our Chicagoland market runs. And hopefully at the end of the year, it ran successful and I get uh, maybe a Starbucks gift card. <laughs> Bye.